Hi, I'm Maren Gimple, field ecologist and bird bander at Washington College's River and Field Campus. Today I'm going to talk to you about nest boxes. Now is the perfect time to clean out and get boxes ready that you already have in your yard or to get new boxes to install. In fact, bluebirds have already started building nests and Carolina chickadees are busy investigating boxes as potential nesting sites for the coming season. There are many different styles of nest boxes. Boxes designed from bluebirds come in several different shapes, from a standard rectangular with a round hole, to slanted boxes, and to other boxes with different type openings. This one is intended to discourage starlings. You can also buy boxes with a much smaller entrance hole, like this one, specifically designed for wrens. No matter what shape of box you use, I strongly recommend choosing one that opens. This allows you to monitor what is going on inside the box, whether that's enjoying the sight of eggs and chicks, or being able to evict house sparrows or mice. One of the most important things to consider when installing a new nest box is to protect it from predators. There are several types of guards you can use on your box. The most common baffle is made from heavy plastic or metal and shaped like a skirt around the post. Another style is a section of stove pipe that goes over the pole. Both of these designs are intended to stop predators from climbing up the post to reach the nest box. Another option is to use a very slender pole. This won't stop snakes, but it will probably be too hard for raccoons to climb. Lastly, you can also add some wire mesh around the entrance hole. This is intended to make it hard for a raccoon that has managed to scale the pole to reach down into the nest. If you are installing a new box, think carefully about where you put it. Most backyard birds will tolerate quite a bit of human activity, but you don't want a box right next to your door or along a part of your yard that is heavily trafficked. One other thing, if you have tree swallows that are fighting with other species like bluebirds over who gets to use the box, you can sometimes put two boxes back to back. The same species won't nest that close together, but you can have a tree swallow and a bluebird use back to back boxes. They don't see each other as competition if they have their own space. Now that you have some ideas about how to choose a nest box and where to put it in your yard, let's talk about who's gonna use them. I'll tell you a little bit about which species you're most likely to find in your yard and how to tell them apart. All of these birds have nests and eggs that are pretty distinctive once you know what to look for. Let's start with Eastern Bluebirds. They'll make an open cup of dried grass or pine needles and usually have bright blue eggs. Five is the normal number. They're one of the earliest nesters in our area. And in fact, they've already started building nests at the River and Field campus. Bluebirds can nest up to three times in one summer. Tree swallows will build a very distinctive nest. The base of it will be short dried grass lined with feathers of all different types. Their eggs are white and they'll lay between four and six of them. Tree swallows usually only nest once a summer if they successfully fledge chicks. If their eggs or chicks got eaten or failed due to inclement weather, they will try again, but usually not in the same box. Carolina chickadees will build a nest whose base contains several inches of green moss. The top of it will have a layer of animal fur or other fuzzy things. They'll often bury their eggs until they've finished laying and only then will they uncover them and arrange them in a circle cup in the top of the nest. Their eggs are small and speckled with brown. They can lay between five and eight in a single nest. Because it takes so much energy to produce so many eggs, chickadees only nest once per breeding season. Tufted titmice will construct sort of a messy looking nest with pieces of leaves, fuzz, and grass, but generally they will not put man-made objects into the nest. 
If you find a nest that looks messy but also contains ripped pieces of plastic bag or string, it's probably not a titmouse. Titmice eggs are white and brown and speckled, but they're bigger than chickadee eggs and the nests look completely different. They'll lay between four and six eggs. Now the wrens. Carolina wrens will also build a messy nest of leaves and other vegetation, but you can tell them apart from titmice because they will almost always have sort of a dome covering the top or at least part of the top of the nest. The eggs will almost look like they're down inside a tunnel or like an igloo. If Carolina wrens nest without using a box, they can put their nest anywhere. So if you find a nest under your barbecue grill, between your air conditioning unit and your window frame, any unusual weird spot, it's probably a Carolina wren. Carolina wren eggs are white and brown and speckled. They usually lay five eggs and they'll breed multiple times in a summer. Lastly, house wrens. Male house wrens will start to build several nests in an attempt to convince a female that she should mate with him. They'll start by filling a nest box with twigs. Only after the female has decided she wants to use that nest will they create a cup on top of the twigs lined with finer pieces of grass and other vegetation. Their eggs are small and sort of a deep reddish speckled brown. They can have six to eight eggs in a nest. Maybe you've been told that you should never touch nests or eggs or baby chicks. And so it concerns you to think about opening these boxes to look inside. Fear not. Songbirds actually have no sense of smell, so they have no idea that you've opened their box to peek inside unless they see you do it. Even so, a quick visit once a week is not gonna cause too much disturbance. Cornell University has a great website called Nest Watch, where you can watch a few videos to learn about the species in your area and best practices for monitoring nests. And then you can use the website to keep track of what's going on with the nests in your yard. It's also a great way to have your data lumped together with that of thousands of other citizens and made available to researchers who are investigating various aspects of breeding bird biology. I hope you found some useful tips here today and that you're inspired to put up a new nest box in your yard. I hope you find some cool birds.